Presenting Detective Nick Harris in a salute to the law. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you Detective Nicholas B. Harris, chief of the internationally known Los Angeles detective agency bearing his name in one of his dramatizations of true life crime stories, proving to the youth of today the folly of committing crime. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Ladies and gentlemen, time and again I have repeated the statement that crime does not pay. Whether the criminal is one who has committed murder or petty larceny, still he cannot win against the combined forces of a decent social order and the law enforcement officers. And the story I have chosen to now dramatize serves to once more emphasize the point in question. So as we draw back the curtains of this true life drama, which I have entitled A Young Shoplifter, let us trail the career of a young girl who got started down the wrong road of life. For the purpose of this story, we will call her Pearl Matlache. I first heard of her one spring afternoon some years ago when the tingling of my telephone bell... Hello? I'm sorry, Mr. Harris, but Mr. Newbell insists she must talk to you. Well, all right, put her on. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Here she is. Mr. Ruth? Yes, Mr. Nuzo, what is it? I've just got a very young girl stealing a pair of silk stockings. Well, turn her over to the police. Oh, but I don't want to do that. She's so young, and the owner of the store says he will not prosecute. Well, then take her home or let her go. Mr. Harris, I think something could be done with this girl. It's a to her or her family. Don't you go with us to her home. She's crying, and I can't go through with her. All right, Marie. I'll meet you in front of the building in ten minutes. Hmm. A petty thief. An uncontrollable love for pretty things, I suppose. Mr. Harris, uh, here are those papers in that case. I got them just as quickly as yes, I could. thank you very much. But put them on my desk. I've got a call to go out. Yes, sir. This is Marie DeNuzo. She's got a young girl shoplifter and wants me to see what I can do. Oh, Mr. DeNuzo again? Yeah, and I hate to turn her down. Any person Marie wants to help is usually worth helping. And this time, well... We'll see and make note of any calls while I'm on. Yes, sir. All right, Pearl. Come along with Mr. News on me, right up to your doorstep. I'm awfully sorry, sir. I'll never do it again. Honest, I won't. We hope you mean that. Why do I do? But, Mr. Harris, yes, do, you, do you have to go up to the door to my house with me? Can't you leave me here on the walk? I hate for Margaret and Blanche to know. Well, better your family know than the police. Oh. Well, just don't and don't cry. You said your mother was a widow and that she works day time. Well, she won't be here now. And your youngest sister, Blanche, won't understand much about it anyway. Oh, come along, my dear. They're only trying to keep you out of most serious trouble. But, but you see, Margaret, she sort of takes care of all of us while Mother's working. And she's older than I am. And oh, if she just didn't have to yeah, know. Yeah, but she's going to know, Pearl. So come along with us. <laughs> Pearl, Pearl, what's the matter? Why are you crying? Oh, Margaret. Your I name is Peter Shea. Margaret Shea. Yes, who are you people? I'm Marie DeNuzo, special department store operator. This is Detective Harris. Oh, we're just bringing your sister home. Yes, Miss Lachey, instead of taking her to jail. Oh, jail? She was caught stealing a pair of expensive silk stockings. More expensive than I imagined she could have paid for. Pearl, come into the house. No, 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 no. Margaret, don't, don't be too hard on me. I didn't mean to. I didn't. Get into your room and stay there. Oh. Just you wait till Mom gets home. She'll give you a good licking that you won't forget. I'm sorry we had to do this, Margaret. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that Pearl will never do anything like this again. Uh, Miss Lachey, it's because we hope she won't. Because we hope that... This scare may be the only lesson she needs that we brought her home to you. Now, the responsibility is mostly yours and your mother's. Come, Mr. Nuzo. I've got to hurry back to the office. All right, Mr. Harris. Goodbye, Margaret. And I hope everything turns out all right. Oh, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you both. Months pass, and all thoughts of Pearl Lachey, the young shoplifter, have vanished. However, one afternoon in the late fall of the same year... Mr. Hempstead, you asked me to come down here to your store. What do you want to see me about? Well, Mr. Harris, I have a cashier whom I believe is taking money from us somehow. So far, I haven't been able to actually catch her at it. I have strong suspicion. I uh, wonder if you'd shadow her and see if there's anything to it. Surely, Mr. Hempstead, you... where will I find your suspect working? It's the main floor at the cashier's box, along the hosiery counter. Very well. I'll go outside now and come back in from the street. I'll simply be a shop. Understand, Mr. Hempstead? So it's Pearl Lachey again. Well, I'll have a little chat with her. And... Hello, Pearl. Oh, oh, Mr. Harris, what are you doing here? Checking up on me? No, just shopping. I happened to see you, so I thought I'd speak to you. Oh, oh, sure. How do you like your new job? Oh, I like it a lot. I've been behaving myself, too, just like I promised I would. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Pearl. Just keep straight and you'll never regret it. You've got to be going now, so goodbye. And goodbye, Mr. Harris. department store had a new clerk, Mrs. Lillian Brooks from the Harris office, and this special operative noted that Pearl Lachey forgot to ring up several sales. However, as yet, Lillian Brooks hadn't discovered the girl's method of making away with the money not registered. But after working hours, the tale to shadow Pearl when away from the store were Lulu Lane and Hazel Gordon, two other special women operatives, and as they begin, began their vigilance, they noticed... Hazel, hey, so look, she's meeting someone. That chap with only one arm. See the grin on his face and the happy smile on hers? Yes. Who is he? Do you know him, Lulu? Oh, that's Charles Stevens, a dirty rat, Hazel. He works for the department stores on the lookout for young girls just out of school. He's been up several times on such charges. Well, he seems to be a very good friend of our little suspect right now. Come on, there they go into the crowd. We're following that pair all night with them. The following morning. Hello? Mr. Harris, this is Hazel Burns. The sales girl was staying here all night. She didn't go home until almost four this morning. Anything else, Hazel? Yes, she's going to Charles Beaver's. They put all the night stuff their time for her. Dancing, drinking, all the rest. Then he took her home. To a new place where she seems to live alone. No clues yet. Okay, keep right after. And the morning following that... Yes? What is it? Hazel Gordon again, Mr. Harris. Lula Lane and I followed Pearl to say again last night. It's the same story. Around the house, box of young beavers. That's all. All right, Hazel. Don't give up. Several nights of vigil by the two women investigators brought nothing more to life. But during working hours, Pearl Lachey was not so successful in hiding her undercover activities. For well, Mrs. Lillian Brooks, the operative posing as a new clerk, made a startling discovery. And now, Miss Lane and Miss Gordon, Pearl Lachey put the money she failed to ring up in a small cardboard box under the counter. Oh, so that's it, Mrs. Brooks. Yes, uh, she keeps her makeup there, too, to hide the coins. Pretty clever. But every once in a while, usually about this time of the morning, she goes to the restroom and there destroys the sales slips which balance against the amount she steals. She also transfers the money to her person. Look, she's leaving the counter now. Yes, and the little cardboard box is under her arm. That's our cue, girls. Come on, let's go and get the police. And there'll be three of us who can testify as witnesses. Mr. Hempstead, so you refuse to prosecute? Yes, Mr. Hell. That girl, well, blame it. She's a darn young man. Who we'll let her go? She can't work here anymore. No, sir, she can't do that. A 
Another year passed, a year in which no word of Pearl Lachey was heard. Perhaps the little shoplifter had reformed. But one day, reappearing out of a clear sky, Pearl was once more seen by Lulu Lane, seen and trailed, as she was entering one of Los Angeles' smartest department stores, and her companion was the debonair Charles Jeevers. Is this the floor, dear? Yes, Charles. Oh, here comes the clerk now. May I help you? Yes. You see, uh, I'm, well, we're going to be married soon, and I'd like to select a wedding gown. Oh, a wedding gown? Won't you step this way, please? Uh, certainly. Come along, Charles. All right, darling. Now, here are several lovely gowns that I'm sure you'll be interested in. And... Oh, that one. Charles, do you like it? Well, Pearl, I, I believe I prefer that one there. Well, then I'll try them both on and see which you like the best. Yes, just step this way, please. All right, then. We'll leave it that way. We'll make the $5 deposit now, and tomorrow I'll bring my mother down to see the gown. I'm crazy about it That's myself. That's gown. But... Where is it? Have any of you clerks seen it? Honey, hurry. Let's get going. The head sale woman's wise, I think. Come on. Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you, Miss. Miss Harper, have you seen that gown? That pearl-trimmed wedding gown? How oh, it's gone. Why, it was there in the dressing room just a moment no, ago. No, you must be mistaken. It's nowhere to be found. And I have a customer ready to take it. A debutante, one of our most important customers. She saw it yesterday and she wants it. Oh, where is it? I don't know. But I do know that gown was there. That young woman who just left, the one with the young man, well, she just tried it on. It couldn't have vanished into thin air. But it has, it has, and we've got to find it. That gown, Miss Hopper, was valued at $500. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may guess, and rightfully enough, that Pearl Lachey stole the wedding gown valued at $500. But how did she do it? And how was she caught with the goods upon her own person? Well, remember, Miss Lula Lane saw every move of what you have just heard enacted upon our radio stage. And therefore, but suppose we bring you the conclusion of this story next week, because there's a strong moral lesson yet to be pointed out in the case of Pearl Lachey. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard another true life story brought to you by Detective Nicholas B. Harris, internationally famous Los Angeles criminologist and chief of the detective agency bearing his name. Although this was a true story, fictitious names and places have been used throughout this narrative. The story was dramatized by Howard W. Bull and produced under the direction of Carolyn Carroll with Wesley Turtelot at the organ. Mr. Harris wishes me to thank the following cast for their participation this evening. Olive Thomas, Mary Ryan, Gertrude Harris, Helena Reagan, Betty Carmine, Lenore Thompson, Robert Moore, Elizabeth Bates, Marion O'Moore, and Earl Hurt. The Nick Harris program will again be heard over this station next Friday evening at 8.45. Invite you to tune in at that time and hear the concluding episode of the true crime story, The Young Shoplifter. This is Frank Russell speaking.